shells, rocks, and more are thrown at Israeli security forces Thursday night in Jerusalem. It happened as up to 1,000 Ethiopian Israelis held a protest against Israeli police. Ten protesters and three officers were hurt. This week, a video surfaced showing two police officers assaulting an Israeli soldier of Ethiopian descent. The Ethiopian community says this is an example of the ongoing brutality it faces. The officers have been suspended pending an investigation. Also this week, tensions rose again in the West Bank. A Palestinian shot by Israeli soldiers died. He's a third Palestinian killed in a flare-up of violence. The Israeli military says the teen, just 18 years old, was part of a group of Palestinians trying to cut through Israel's barrier in the West Bank and refused to stop. The teen's family says he was walking in fields near the barrier after attending a wedding celebration and that he never tried to cross the barrier. All of this comes amid renewed tensions between Israel and the Palestinians. Consider this. For months, Israel froze hundreds of millions of dollars in tax receipts it owed to the Palestinian Authority. Then the Palestinians joined the International Criminal Court, widely considered a pretext to bringing war crimes charges against Israel. The withheld taxes were paid. What's more, Israel's prime minister shunned potential peace negotiations during his re-election campaign. But is there actually a quiet campaign to mend relations? CCTV's Stephanie Freed has insight. It was Prime Minister Netanyahu's campaign statement that drove the nail into the proverbial coffin of relations between Israelis and Palestinians. While I am Prime Minister, he told voters, there will be no Palestinian state. Already reeling from hundreds of millions of dollars in Palestinian Authority funds frozen by Israel as retribution for the Authority's membership bid with the ICC, Palestinian officials warned the friction may play out on the streets. This is a recipe for a disaster. This is inflaming anger. And if uh, that will reflect itself in the streets, Palestinian Authority itself might be the price in the, in the beginning, and Israel definitely will not be very far from uh, feeling the heat of the anger of the people. But incrementally, there was a shift. Netanyahu recanted his no Palestinian state decree, frozen funds were transferred, and Palestinian police deployed to Jerusalem border neighborhoods for the first time ever a sign of increased cooperation between the two sides. For the first time in 15 years, Palestinian vehicles were issued entry permits to Israel. And for the first time in eight years, Gaza produce is being imported to Israel. There's speculation that these concessions are not accidental and that higher-ups are making deals behind closed doors. Officials on both sides declined to comment on that speculation. Analysts say concessions may have been offered in exchange for Palestinian willingness to hold back on international criminal court investigations against Israel. These are all localized, temporary, ad hoc solutions that are likely meant to alleviate pressure out of the notion that a bigger conclusive agreement at this time is unlikely. And the Palestinians understand that, and the Israelis are understanding it. The bigger agreement he's referring to? Yeah a peace deal calling for Israel's withdrawal from occupied Palestinian land. Current security threats coming from Lebanon and Syria mean Israel will not agree to a pullout as long as those concerns persist. Stephanie Freed, 